and you should all see something on your screen that says the meeting's being recorded. So good afternoon and welcome to the first African Heritage Reparation Assemblies meeting. My name is Jennifer Moist and I am the staff liaison to the A. HRA, and I would like to introduce our members from our screen. From my screen view, I have Michelle Miller, Alexis Reed, Irv Rhodes, Town Manager Paul Bockelman, Jamila Jemison, and Dr. Milkar Shabazz. So our first order of business will be to hold public comment. Um, during public comment, we are here to listen and we don't respond to the public comment at this time. And so we do have some hands raised. And I think we're going to, I have Susan uh, Det. Sue Det. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sue. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, everyone. Um, I only raised my hand in the beginning because I didn't see myself on the screen, but I, I realized that I'm going to be pulled into the room when the time comes. So I have no comment. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Okay. We can leave you right there. And from Goodwin Memorial. How did... I don't know. No? Okay, so that's all the hands raised. And so now we're going to do the members report. And so typically during a, a meeting, all of the members, this is a time for you guys to um, share any information on the topics that we're in, to share any information in regards to our charge and our mission or information you would like to share with the group that's not on the agenda itself. And so for today's meeting, I would like you guys all to introduce yourselves and just tell you tell us what made you decide to be on this a part of this assembly. And so starting with my screen, I'm going to say Dr. Milkar Shabazz. Thank you, everyone. So good to join with you to uh, uh, begin this important work. I um, am excited to uh, be a part of um, working in Amherst to address uh, important matters that were uh, identified in, um, in various uh, documents and resolutions that our town council have passed. And I think if we um, put shoulder to the wheel and work together effectively, we will make a lasting uh, contribution to fulfilling those, uh, those important resolutions. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Ms. Heather Halla Lord. Yes, could you please remind me what we're saying? Yes, you're just introducing yourself and why you chose to be part of the assembly. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Heather A. Lord, also known as Hala. Um, and I have done undoing racism work, um, coming together work for many, many years. I'm excited about Amherst taking this step to look at um, ways to be more repairing and less harming. and. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Uh, and Jamila. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Jamila Jemison, and um, I am a physician by training. I work in the pharmaceuticals industry. Um, I recently moved back to Amherst uh, just in the in the middle of the pandemic, but I grew up here. Um, my family landed here in 1980, and then I, I lived here until I went off into college. Um, and basically, I, I, I believe in repara reparations, and I thought, you know, I have a stake in this community. <laughs> like when we talk about folks who lived in Amherst, you're, you're black folks. That's that's me. So I, you know, if you don't get involved with uh, an issue that directly pertains to you, I, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so I wanted to come and be a part of this. Though I admit, I've not, uh, I've never been on a like a, a public. Uh, a community serving group like this before. So I'm learning all the ways as we go along. Excellent. We have lots to teach today and lots to go over for that. And Mr. Irv Rhodes. Oh, 
Oh, no, you muted yourself. Yep. All right. Uh, hello, my name is Irv Rhodes. I've been living here for uh, in Amherst for 40 years plus, I think. I came here uh, to uh, finish the doctorate. I finished my doctorate and then uh, met my wife when we raised our family here. I've been involved with Amherst uh, politics and, this, and then also the social part of, uh, of Amherst for any number of years in various positions, uh, including chair of the school committee, president of the Rotary Club, um, and on the Charter Commission. Um, and uh, one of the things that uh, I've, I've observed and, and in a quote that keeps coming to mind is that uh, people who are really, uh, when they are a part of history, they very seldom realize that they are a part of history. This is history making. And so I want to acknowledge that we are all a part of this history and the importance of it uh, as we go forward. And one pledge that I can make is that I will be uh, A, fully involved and B, fully engaged with each and every one of you. And I really thank everyone who was involved in uh, getting me appointed to this committee for making it so. So thank you. Thank you. And Alexis? Hi, thank you. Can you also hear me? Okay, awesome. Um, hi, my name is Alexis Reed. Um, I, oh, just myself, I've lived here my whole life. That's about 30 years. Um, but the Black side of my family actually came here in the 70s um, to work at UMass and eventually, you know, got very um, deeply involved with the community and, you know, working with the James Baldwin Scholars Program and um, just basically being involved in activism in general. Um, and so it's something that's deeply rooted within myself. Um, and I, I agree with so much of what everyone has, you know, been saying and that it's, it's not only historical, but also this, um, this urge to be involved and help out in, you know, in any way that I can. Um, so there's that. And also this is just generally a, an extremely important um, thing that I, I am very invested in and, um, you know, always looking to the future and, you know, what, what does, you know, Black joy and liberation and all of that look like in the future and how can we work to make that a reality? Great. Thank you. And Michelle? Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle, and I really appreciate what everyone has offered. Um, I come to this as an extension of the reparations work I've been doing in the community for the past year as a representative for reparations for Amherst. And I am very humbled and honored to be part of this committee. It is also my first time serving on a, a committee, a town committee. So we're all, or some of us are learning <laughs> at the same time. Um, so thank you. And Excellent. I've been here since 98. Great. And so we also have with us um, Paul Bockelman, the town manager. Would you like to say a few words, Paul? Thank you, Jen. I, I hope you'll t introduce yourself too um, when we finish this. So I just, I'm just i just here to welcome you and thank you all for putting your names forward and st standing up to serve on this really important committee. I agree with members who have said this is a historic opportunity. It's groundbreaking work. This is work that uh, is, not, is being done in other parts of the country, but not many other parts of the country. So we have the opportunity to be um, to really set a standard for other communities who want to do this kind of work. Um, I'm here and uh, Jennifer and other staff are here today to um, help you learn um, about what it means to be on a committee. There's, it is different. Some of you have had a lot of ex deep experience serving on committees, on school committee and other committees as well as elected officials, but some haven't. And so we wanna assume that, you know, just, just go over some, what the rules are about open meeting law and things like that. Uh, and we're here to support you in your work and uh, just keep us posted on what you need. And Jennifer will be your contact on that. So thank you so much. 
Excellent. And so, as I said before, my name is Jennifer Moyston, and I have lived in Amherst just about my entire life. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of work around inclusion um, and equity. And I have to be honest, at first when reparations, we, about a year ago when we started talking about them, I was trying to figure out what that would look like. And so I'm very interested in seeing the different ways as a group that you guys come together and find um, different ways to do some of the repair that's been done. Okay, great. And so for those, and as some of you are well known in regards to uh, public boards and committees, but it is an entirely different beast on its own. And so to help us out to begin with, we have Sue Adet, who is our town clerk, and she is going to go over some of the open meeting laws that are very important that we, um, that our, our meetings fall within those guidelines that she's going to speak about. And so Sue, I'm gonna share my screen and bring up your presentation. Okay. And are you ready, Sue? I am, I can see it too. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. All right. Well, nice to see you all. I just saw a couple of you at my window a few minutes ago. Um, welcome. And um, before we set upon, or you set upon making history, <laughs> just wanna go over a couple couple of pointers that, you know, as Jennifer said, um, public, public bodies are, um, need to follow basically. So, um, so, the, so the purpose of the open meeting law as this first slide shows is basically to ensure transparency in the deliberations on which a public body is based. Um, so I'm not gonna read the slides word for word. I have some other wording here that I'd like to read, but um, basically the democratic process demands on the public um, that they have knowledge about the considerations underlying governmental action. Sorry, I'm gonna, let me start that again. This makes no sense. Um, because the democratic process demands on the public having knowledge about the considerations underlying governmental action, the open meeting law requires with some exceptions that the meetings of public bodies be open to the public. It also seeks to balance the public's interest in witnessing the deliberations of public officials with the government's need to manage its operations efficiently. And um, so basically this, you, this probably sounds familiar. If you've started to read your open meeting law guide that you should have been handed out when you were sworn into your office. But um, the whole point of this is to make sure that everything that you do is above reproach, basically, in a word, um, that all the, the actions that you're taking are, are in the public eye, nothing is hidden. And, um, and well, that, that's it. If you can go to the next slide. Sure. Yeah, thank you. All right. So, um, all right. So we'll get into that, what I just said earlier, um, or just a second ago, a little bit further, but this slide, so this is a question we get asked a lot. And if you go to the attorney general's website on the open meeting law, this is one of their FAQs. There's, there's a few FAQs that they get asked multiple times, and this is one of them. So the calculation of the quorum. So if you are, let's say a nine member body, and I'm on one right now, um, but if there are vacancies, that it, can, it can get confusing as to how to calculate a quorum. So um, basically the open meeting law defines a quorum as a simple majority of the members of a public body. Okay, so a nine member body a, a majority of that would be half plus one, basically. So it would be five. So let's say that nine member body has two vacancies and there are only seven people. You may be tempted to say half is, or the quorum would be half of the seven, but it's not, it's half of the full member body. All right. Um, so if there are, and if there are ever any questions on any of this, you can always call our office. I wanted to put, put that out there because we've dealt with this for, you know, years. <laughs> All right, um, so the next slide, please. This is another issue that comes up um, through the AG's office, one of those multiple asked questions. So 
deliberations. So this is where you get into um, being careful about what you're talking about outside of a posted meeting. Okay, you don't want anything that you talk about outside of a meeting to be thought of as deliberation or you will be in violation of the open meeting law. So basically a public body can communicate with other public body members over email, but only on certain things. Okay, um, so those things are under the exceptions section of this slide, which is basically distribution, distribution of agendas or scheduling, any kind of procedural information, any kind of reports or documents that are going to be discussed at an upcoming meeting, provided that no opinion of a member of that body is expressed. Because the minute somebody offers an opinion that goes out to the full board, the full membership of the board, it's now considered deliberation and you are now in violation of the open meeting law because you're discussing something outside of a posted meeting. So you wanna be careful with things like that. Um, and let's go to the next slide. Um, we threw this in here because we figured this is just a good framework for how to conduct meetings. And it's um, Robert's Rules of Order is a, is a publication that talks about all different kinds of meetings and how to compose yourself basically. So how to speak. So a chair will be elected and the chair keeps the order and enforces rules and they'll be elected for a term of a year or more you know, or whatever the um, membership of the meeting is, uh, uh, the time frame. Um, or they can be elected just to serve over that particular meeting. So it would be up to you to decide. And the chair will call the meeting to order once a quorum has been established. And members in that meeting are required to speak by addressing the chair. So you know they can you can decide amongst yourselves how you're going to conduct this. This is just a, um, you know an example of how you can conduct yourselves during your meetings. Um, and again, members may only discuss topics on the posted meeting agenda. So I know there's a, there's a catch all phrase which you can use in posting your meetings, which is any other topics that may come before this body within 48 hours of the meeting. And that's okay to bring up things that are not contentious if you um, feel that they're just, you know, housekeeping kind of things or, um, you know, it, something that's not going to be a topic of contention. But for the most part, when you post a meeting agenda, you really should be covering all the topics that you're going to be discussing at that upcoming meeting and try to stick with that and not include anything else. So let's see, motion. So when you're in the middle of your meeting, if someone wants to propose something to the group to be voted on, a formal proposal by a member of the public body um, can, can be brought forward by beginning with, I move that. So it could be, I move that. We consider the April 9th meeting minutes at our next meeting. That's, a, that's like an um, example of a motion. And it brings it before the group and the motion uh, must be seconded in order to be considered by the group. And then it would be voted on. Because we're in Zoom meetings, all votes have to be done by roll call. So the chair would say, okay, once you've brought it before the group and a second has been made, then the vote would be taking, taken and the chair would uh, you know, call on each one of you by name and you would, you would give your verbal vote. Um, so that's how you handle motions. And um, discussions, debates, um, let me see. This would be, you know, once the motion's put on the table to be discussed, you would just, um, you can you can decide how you're going to do it. It's you know it's it's good if each member asks the clerk the chair the clerk sorry the chair to speak so that you keep order um, so people aren't talking over each other. But um, I think I've already talked about most of that already. So and then you would put, and then the chair after the votes taken at the end would announce the results so that the public can hear. So you're going to have people calling into the meeting that don't have a visual. So you're going to want to uh, make sure that what's happening is being spoken as well. Okay, um, next slide. Yeah, and again, on the agenda, it sets out the order in which specific items are to be considered. And this is a sample um, format for an agenda when you're trying to figure out how do we post an agenda? What, what should it say? Um, Basically, these are topics that are good to cover. Um, so public comment, reading and approval of prior minutes, any reports that you're going to be discussing, any unfinished business from previous meetings, any new business. Now, 
just a little caveat on new business. On an agenda, when you're submitting it for posting, which is done through our office, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you don't want to just say new business on your agenda because it's not specific enough. You should identify what new business you're, you're going to want to discuss. Okay. And, and then there's that other business not reasonably anticipated. You, you should have that on every one of your meeting postings, which is, as I said earlier, um, a cover all in case there is something that you forgot to list. You can, if it's not a contentious item, you can list it under, you can speak about it under that topic. And then adjournment. Now adjournment, I know it's on the slide. That's something I, I um, it's not a topic in my mind, it's not a topic. You really don't need to list it, but okay, next slide. All right, so meeting minutes, let me see now. Um, so you do have to take minutes of each meeting and you're going to elect someone to be the minute taker. Um, you can decide how you wanna do that. Um, certain groups will pass it along to different members. You know, One person will do it for one meeting, another person will do it for another meeting, or you may want somebody to take them all the time. So you can decide on who's going to be the lucky one. Um, and minutes must state that when they're, when they're composed, they must state the time, date, and place of the meeting and identify if the meeting was conducted remotely. Um, I know on our minutes for the groups that I've been in, we even include the link to the Zoom video once it's been released. And you're going to list the members that were at that meeting and the members that were absent. You'll summarize the discussions on the agenda topics. The minutes aren't considered a verbatim listing of what happened at that meeting, because that would be a transcript. So you can, um, as long as they're specific, but not so blatantly outlined, you know, you don't want to go too far in either direction, but just so the public that haven't, hasn't attended that meeting can read the minutes and know what was stated at that meeting. That's what their purpose is. And it's the minutes should record any decisions made. So if there's any motions that were um, put forward and voted on, you would list all that, the votes taken. It will list the documents used. I think I just heard a little noise. Is my time up, Jen? Oh, oh no, you can continue. Oh, okay. I heard a little bling. Um, Okay, and list the documents that were used at that meeting. State the time that the meeting was adjourned. And you should approve your minutes within the next three meetings or 30 days, whichever is later. And this is also in the open meeting law. And um, also the law requires that existing minutes be made available to the public within 10 days of a request, whether they have been approved or they remain in draft form. Okay. And the last slide, and then I have a couple things to talk about that's not in my presentation here too, but um, you can always go on to mass.gov, the open meeting law. It's through the um, attorney general's website, which is actually the division of open government. The attorney general has created that division. And they also, um, at that level, on the state level, they provide training, they respond to inquiries, they investigate complaints. Um, so, and they're very helpful and they're very responsive. So always feel free to reach out to them as well as our office. Okay, um, open meeting law guide. Everyone should have gotten a copy of that. And if you haven't, let me know, I'll email it to you. And uh, checklists, I'm not quite sure what I've got for that. I think that might be for executive um, session. If you ever decide to go into executive session, there's a checklist for that. And then again, Robert's rules of order. But um, I also wanted to talk about posting. So um, you'll, you'll, we offer training on how to how to submit a meeting posting. I don't know, Jennifer, are you going to be the one who's doing the posting for the group? Yes. You will be? Oh, okay. So Jennifer doesn't need training and Jennifer knows what to do. So I don't even need to go into this, but just real quick, meetings have to be posted within 48 hours of the meeting, not including Saturdays, Sundays, or Monday holidays. Um, but they also have to keep in mind that you have to give the town clerk sufficient time in which to post it. So you can't submit it right at the 48 hour mark. So that's, um, I just wanted to bring that up. And um, it does have to get posted by the town clerk's office to make it legal. Once we get the submission that a meeting is to be posted, we go ahead in there and we, we verify everything is accurate and complete. And we put our little blurb on there and that's when you know it's been officially posted. It'll say received date and time um, by our office. So it'll say that right in the agenda section of the meeting posting if you ever look it up online. Um, and I think, let me see. 
And I think I'm, oh, um, conflict of interest. Am I to talk about that or is that already being handled by somebody else? No, I'm, I'm kind of go through a little bit of everything as we move forward as it pertains to this group in particular, but any okay. feedback on the conflict of interest would be fantastic. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, well, the conflict of interest is something, um, it's, the, it's the state ethics commission. It's not the attorney general's office and public members of boards and committees and um, municipal employees, state employees, a lot, uh, most of us are all subject to the conflict of interest law. And in your appointment letter, I believe you'll have um, the link there for the online training and for the uh, summary sheet, but um, we do all have to comply with that. So um, if you have any questions on it, basically just let me know, but um, you will have to go online and do the online training and have as much fun as we did with that. So, uh, <laughs> but it's very, it's very important because it, it pretty much tells you what you really can and cannot do as a public employee. Um, general for some people it's it's pretty standard kind of things you know you can't accept bribes uh, you know things like that that's what it's going to discuss um, but there's also these subtle things that you wouldn't even think that was an issue but it, it brings it to your attention so so um, if anyone would like links if you don't have them for whatever reason I'd be happy to send so I think that's it for me unless there are any questions yeah I was just going to open up and ask if folks had questions It's a lot of bureaucratic issues at the beginning. We'll get into stuff as we go along, though. No? Well, thank you so much, Sue, our town clerk. And she's available on the first floor of town hall if anyone has questions or needs to get in touch with her. Thank you so much, Sue. You're welcome. And go make history, everybody. I'm, I'll leave you now to talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. So now I'm going to introduce Sean Mangano, who is the finance director for the town of Amherst. And he's gonna give you an overview of the budget process and where we stand with finances now. Hi, Sean. Hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go over the budget process and I'll also highlight along the way the best places to participate um, uh, for this committee. Great, thank you. All right, so these are the key points points um, throughout the budget process. And if you have any questions while we go, you can just, just shout out or uh, let Jen know. Um, so right now we are in that first box, September through December. And the Community Preservation Act window is open. Um, the Community Preservation Act is a, a separate funding source, essentially, that's partially funded by taxation, partially funded by state funds, um, and it's allocated by the Community Preservation Act Committee. There are very specific um, criteria for a project to qualify for the Community Preservation Act. But the four major categories are recreation, open space, um, affordable housing, and historic preservation. So depending on what you're looking at, it's potentially something could go through that, um, that funding source. And right now, there's a window of time where anybody can submit a proposal for Community Preservation Act funds. Um, it ends on October 1st. And these funds go to the Community Preservation Act Committee, who will make a recommendation um, which will ultimately go to the town manager and the town council. Um, and those funds would become available July 1st of next year. Um, and so that's right now, that's sort of the first uh, piece of the budget process that we're in. Um, the thing that's about to open up, moving to the next box, is the um, resident capital request. This is a, another sort of form that we make available on the website that anybody, any resident can submit a request for a capital project. Um, we've had several in the past. Last year, there was one around a, a sustainability analysis of buildings, for example. Um, and these requests come in, they will be evaluated um, by the town manager, and then potentially included into a, um, the, the capital plan that goes to the council for approval. Um, and it's also evaluated by the joint capital planning committee, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and so that's open for the month of October. 
Um, after that is the, in November, we do something called the financial indicators report. Um, it's a big meeting um, between the town council, the school committee, uh, library board of trustees, I believe the regional school committee is also part of it. Um, and at this meeting, that's where we lay out our sort of initial forecast for the upcoming budget year. So this year we'll be given a forecast for the FY23 budget. And we look at things around um, revenue trends, expenditure trends, and then we make forecasts for the following year about um, where revenues are gonna be. And that meeting is uh, really important because it sort of sets the stage for what the council will, will give us for budget guidelines um, and whether it's gonna be a good budget year or, or a bad budget year. Either at that meeting sometimes or shortly after, um, we have a budget forum. It's a required meeting uh, as part of the charter. And we intentionally do that meeting very early in the process so that the community um, can give input as to what they'd like to see in the next year's budget. Um, you know, things they'd like to see more of or things they would like to see less of. Um, we get that very early in the process before the budget is really developed at all um, so that it can influence the development of the budget going forward. So I think that's a key point for this committee. It, if you wanted to provide uh, feedback or ideas or recommendations to the council, that budget forum or sometime in the month of November is a good time. Um, and the reason why that's a good time is because the next box are the budget guidelines. Each year, the finance committee um, will, will sort of craft budget guidelines and these, these guidelines will then go to the council who will ultimately vote on them. And those, those guidelines will set the parameters that the, uh, myself and the town manager will try to develop the budget within. And so some of the things that are in those guidelines are um, like how much operating budgets, budgets can go up, you know, certain percentages and things like that. But there are also programmatic things that are sometimes in those budget guidelines um, where they might call out a specific area um, that they want to see more investment in or changes in. Um, so it's important if you wanted to uh, influence those budget guidelines or provide input before those guidelines are issued, you'd want to have a um, share input in November before the finance committee really digs in um, to developing those budget guidelines. The, and then along the way, we're doing lots of behind the scenes uh, preparation of the budget and things like that. Um, in February to March is the joint capital planning committee. This is a group that has representation from the um, school committee, the town council, um, library board of trustees. And the way it works now under the new charter is that the town manager will have a draft five-year capital improvement program. And we'll present that draft to the joint capital planning committee and they will essentially um, uh, just analyze it and pick it apart and um, we'll in a good way um, to try to make it better. And they'll also receive presentations from departments of all their projects. So every department will come that has a, a project for that upcoming cycle and they will uh, present that information to the Joint Capital Planning Committee. And so this is another good opportunity if there's anything capital related, um, there's public uh, input at all these meetings um, and the Joint Capital Planning Committee can then hear that and, and use that when they analyze the plan. The then the next major milestone is April 1st school department budgets and the library budgets are due. They're on an earlier process so that they can be folded into the town manager's budget. So those must be voted on and approved by their respective committees by April 1st. Then we keep uh, we move forward, we keep doing some more work and then on May 1st the town manager's budget is due. Um, and so on that, either on that night or whenever the next meeting is after that, that's when we give the initial presentation of the budget to the council and the public um, and field sort of initial questions on the budget. Shortly after that, there's a public hearing um, and the public hearing is where people can react to the town manager's budget. So slightly different to the, than from the forum where people give input before the budget's developed. This is more reactionary. So now there's a budget that's released and it, you know, we'll, we'll make investments in certain things. And this is the opportunity for people to say whether they agree or disagree and, and the parts they like and parts they don't like. Then 
uh, throughout the month of May, there are probably seven or eight um, meetings with the finance committee where they meet with every department of the town and they dig into the, the finer details of the, their budgets, their department budgets. Um, and those meetings are all public. Um, and so by the end of May, the finance committee does a lot of work in that compressed timeline so that by the end they can make a recommendation whether to support the budget or not support the budget. And then in June, it will go back to the town council for um, action on the budget and they have to take action by the end of June. Uh, Jen, do you want to go to the next slide? So um, ways to participate in the process. So um, aside from the sort of key dates in the uh, previous slide, one of the ways that's really effective is through your staff liaison. Um, I'll use an example, uh, the, the Environmental Climate Action Committee, their staff liaison often advocates for things through the operating budgets or through capital budgets. And, um, and like this most recent year, for example, there was a, a new capital item around sustainability, which was a result of that advocacy, advocacy. So one way would be just to, through Jen, if there's ideas or things that um, you want the town manager to consider, would be to share those and have Jen relay those to us. Um, if there are things specific to the schools or libraries, just to be aware that those are um, separate processes from the town's process. So the school committee has their own process where they do the initial budget presentation in January, January and a hearing in February. And then the final presentation and vote was in March. Um, I think the library is on a similar schedule. Um, so if there were any, any um, actions or recommendations that were specific to those portions of the budget, um, we wanna connect you with the process, with the process um, before they vote their budget. Um, you can always provide feedback to the town council or the town manager. Um, and then the new thing that we started doing this uh, last, this past year is using Engage Amherst, which is a online platform where we can create different projects and assign people to them and post information um, about that project. And then anybody can come and provide feedback, um, submit questions. And the nice thing about Engage Amherst is that it will keep create a log of all of that, so it will any question that's submitted, it will keep that question so people can come and before they ask maybe the same question, they can see that it was already asked and, and see the response. Um, and it can also log you know, feedback, um, comments, anything like that. Um, and so we did it a little bit, we've done it with different projects. We started with FY22 budget last year um, and I expect we'll do it again with the FY23 budget. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was the budget document itself. Can you click on that link, Jen? So if you scroll to the table of contents, which is um, two pages down. So this budget document is on our website. Um, I think if you hover over, um, government, one of the icons that is the budget. And if you click on that, it'll bring you to the FY22 budget page, um, which has this document. So Jen, if you click on um, any of this stuff would be um, in potentially interesting depending on how much you like budgets. Um, but the area in particular, if you click on where it says summary of municipal budgeting and accounting, if you click on that page number. So this will give you, um, you know, some of these months fluctuate a little bit based on the schedule of the council. Um, but this will give you a little finer breakdown of the different tasks, both sort of internal tasks, things that the staff are working on, um, and then the external actions that committees or councils may be making. Um, and this also goes into a little bit of like the um, information on municipal budgeting and accounting and things like that. So if you can scroll the next page too, Jen. And it just goes throughout the whole fiscal year to give you a sense of, you know, throughout the year, what are the different pieces of the budget that um, are being worked on. And yeah, yep, yeah, great. So yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions on the budget process, if there's anything in particular that people wanted more information on. Um, and then I was also going to give an update after on the, um, the stabilization fund and what the next few months look like. Okay, so um, I saw Dr. Shabazz has his hand up. Well, thank you. Uh, 
Sean Magano, the uh, question of um, the stabilization funds, I, I do await hearing more on, on that uh, and, and what's in, entailed. But uh, for ex if this body was to recommend um, that to the council uh, to look at uh, earmarking the uh, receipts on, on the cannabis industry in, uh, in the town of Amherst. Uh, are there timeline considerations that um, you, would, uh, you would advise us to consider? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, that would be one of those things that you would wanna share in November if you wanted it to be something that's in effect for the FY23 budget. Um, that's the kind of thing that you'd want the council to consider when they're developing their budget guidelines. And um, they will start doing that in November and they usually finalize them in December. Um, but the best time would be to get it to them before the finance committee deliberates on it because the finance committee drafts those guidelines um, and then the council will review them and weigh in on them. But you'd, you'd want it to be something that's um, shared before the finance committee drafts them. And so we, uh, I don't think we don't have exact dates, but as soon as we do have um, exact dates on when those things are gonna happen, we can share those with the committee. Thank you. And Mr. Irv Rhodes has his hand raised. Yes, um, could, Jennifer, could you go back to the beginning of Sean's um, presentation uh, with the flow chart? Sure. Is this the chart you're looking at? Yes, the that's process? the one I'm looking at. Uh, there, there, are, there are a couple of things there that are actually more than a couple of things there. But uh, one of the things that unfortunately this um, committee is going to miss uh, because of the timeline is the CPAC uh, and having uh, and, and making any kind of recommendations in, on, in terms of using CPAC money. Um, is that we, we can't do anything about that. It would be impossible for us to get some things together for that. But um, the October and November and, uh, and, and, and uh, all of November are really important dates that we're gonna have to keep in mind. But the other thing is, is May 1 town manager budget and uh, that, that is due. And we must keep in mind that the town manager, when the town manager presents the budget, the, that budget uh, cannot be increased, but it can be, uh, various items can be decreased. And all of us need to keep that in mind as we go forward. Thank you. Jen, do you want me to give the update on the stabilization fund now? Yes, please. So um, there was a new stabilization fund created um, for reparations and there, there's no funding in it yet. The plan at the time was when we do the free cash transfer, which is an annual process every year, um, anything that's over 5% um, of our budget, we transfer to from free cash to our stabilization fund. And so that will be coming up in October or November. Um, it's based on a, a, a state report that our controller, comptroller does. So it's sort of based on when she completes that report. Um, but that will be coming up in the next couple of months. And so the time, the intent was when that free, free uh, cash transfer, which is a vote of the council, when that vote happens at the same time, that's when I think it was 208 or 210,000, somewhere along those lines, when those funds would be transferred into this new stabilization fund. Um, and the thing to remember with stabilization funds is that um, it's a majority vote of the council to put money in to them, and it's a two-thirds majority to pull money out. Um, so just when we get to the point down the road where there is um, actual expenditures to potentially make from this uh, from the stabilization fund, it'll be a two-thirds vote of the council at that point um, to pull it out to spend it. Excellent. And Dr. Shabazz has an additional question. And re re remind me in terms of the council's action, uh, or, or rather the nature of that fund, that fund is then invested and begins to accrue dividends. Is that correct? Yeah. So those, so, um, so the stabilization fund will, any money that's in there, we do interest allocations every year. So our funds are 
invested in various ways, but whatever the interest is for the year, it gets allocated out to funds based on their balances. Um, so yeah, it will begin um, to, to generate returns um, as soon as the money goes in there. And that's something that, again, we could provide a report on. Usually we do that allocation at the end of the year. So it's something we could do a report on at the end of the year so you could see sort of how it's growing year after year. Great, thank you. And Mr. Rhodes? Uh, Sean, uh, if I, I, I think that you're going to be doing this, but I want to make sure I get it in. That what you just say, said on the stabilization fund and the use thereof, uh, I'm assuming that we will get that uh, put down and writing for us so we can refer to it on uh, any time that we have uh, a need to. Sure. Um, in terms of sort of what I just outlined, in terms of yeah, the in terms of what, yeah. yeah, in yeah. terms of what you just said and outlined and uses, etc. Mm -hmm. Everything associated with it. Um, yeah, yeah, we can give you sort of a a stabilization fund sort of fact sheet um, just so you have that as a reference and. Um, going forward because that yeah that'll be an important piece of the of your deliberations all right thank you and michelle yeah thank you for these presentations and i wonder if we can get a copy of them um both of the presentations that would be great so i'll be sending the entire packet out shortly Awesome. Okay. Um, and I wonder what the group thinks, and maybe this isn't the appropriate time to ask, but um, I know that the Community Preservation Act funding, the, the window is closing on October 1st, but I do wonder if the group has any um, thoughts about the possibility of getting something together um, for that, for this cycle. So I, I, again, I don't know if this is the right time to ask that question, but I plant the seed um, with the group. And oh. Irv? Uh, yes, I mean, in relationship to that question, Michelle, of course, there are a number of things that uh, I would like to propose. Um, and um, in, in my thoughts uh, about doing so within the parameters of the committee meeting and when our first meeting is going to be, which we have not even decided yet, that I, it, it, getting that done uh, within that short time frame would be quite a challenge. It doesn't mean that it could not be done, but it would be challenging. Jen, can I just respond to that really quick? Yes. Um, one thing to be aware of that they've been doing the last couple of years, which might take a little bit of the pressure off is um, they've been voting a budgeted reserve each year for a certain portion of their funds. I think last year was 500,000. And what that is, is it's a, portion of their money that they set aside where if there's a um, project that comes up throughout the during the year after the deadline that they want the CPA committee to consider, um, the CPA committee can consider it and pull it out of those funds. So it, it sets aside so they don't allocate all of their monies. Um, so again, for example, if you came up with a, a CPA eligible project in January, for example, um, and you wanted to pull from that fund, that could be an option so that you don't have to rush and do it now. Thank Again, they you. would have to they would have to evaluate it, recommend it, and it'd have to go through the same sort of approval process. But it but it would be a pot of money that's still available for um, for them to consider. That's great information, and I hope that uh, that will be uh, included in our packet. Sure. And Dr. Shabazz, just mentioning, and and especially in light of that, there are possibilities even after October one to submit something that. Um, Discussions uh, before our uh, Juneteenth uh, event here in the town uh, have been going on with um, uh, members of the historical African American community, uh, particularly in relation to the Civil War tablets, uh, but also uh, more broadly around um, certain kinds of preservation of African American history, uh, African heritage in Amherst, that there are discussions that would, we believe would fit under the historic preservation area and, uh, and discussions are taking place. Uh, they probably won't uh, materialize before October 1. And even if they did, it would still be important, I think, for those ideas to pass through this body for 
for recommendation for endorsement um, uh, on their way out to the uh, to, to to approval at the CPAC uh, level. Are there additional questions for Sean? No. So Jen, I'll um yeah. I'll try to get you something today or tomorrow just to summarize those things that we just discussed um, uh, around the stabilization fund and then around the CPA timeline and um and I'll also send the um the link to sort of the eligibility criteria so you can review that it's, um it'll help you kind of figure out what projects might fit there's um you know there's multiple ways things might be eligible so um, I'll get that to you shortly. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and some or has a question again? No question. I just want to uh, thank Sean for his uh, presentation. And also Sean and I go way back all the way to when he was at uh, in the schools. And so it's always great uh, to see him. And also it's also always great to see someone that you've worked with over the years and how they've progressed through their career. So thank you, Sean. I think I gave my first quarterly budget report to Irv um, back in 2011. And then uh, Dr. Shabazz, I know I presented several times too as well. So it's nice to work with you two again. All right. Excellent. All right, thank you. Thank you. Jennifer, point of order uh, before moving forward. Yes. Do we need to think about someone uh, for purposes of this meeting uh, in collecting and in, in, inscribing out uh, notes for minutes? No, not for this particular meeting, no. You got it covered. All right. I got it covered. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Okay. So that was a lot um, of municipal information, I guess we could call that. And so we're just going to kind of continue on. Okay. So this is the African Heritage Reparation Assembly. And as you guys know, the charges here, the purpose of this assembly is to develop and recommend to the town council a municipal reparation plan that includes both reparations funds, fund and community-wide process of reconciliation and repair for harms against black people. Here's the charge. The charge can also be found on the web page for a AHRA. There are two, two reports. The first report is due on October 31st, 2021 um, to the town council. So I think that maybe you guys should start thinking about if that's a realistic time frame to meet a report or not, or if we will need more time so that if it's if we need to ask the town council for more time, we can do so. And then there's a final report that is due with the completion of the assembly's work. So as always, I always have a set of rules for meetings. Um, so we are all here for the common good and shared success of our community. The AHRA is trying to create an environment where honesty, openness, and trust are the norm. So we, I really cannot stress enough that the meetings here need to be kind of like what we consider a safe space. Like there's there's a time that people aren't gonna agree and that we need to be respectful of that. Um, so I would ask that people say it here and share your thoughts and lean into discomfort and be willing to challenge yourself. But also part of that means is don't walk away from the meeting and say, oh, this should have happened or that should have happened. Please say it at the meeting itself. Um, we need everyone to have compassionate listening. And this goes for those who are going to be making public comments and as far as us listening and them listening and then the audience is listening as well. We're asking people to really listen, respect each other, speak from our own experiences and no judgment and no shaming. The assembly acts by passing motions as our town clerk had told us. The assembly can only act when there is a quorum of members present. The meetings must be posted at least 48 hours in advance. As an individual member, you have no authority to act. As the assembly, you can act by voting on a motion. The power is in the vote. It also means that if you're in town and you're speaking with folks, 
that you were not representing the AHRA at that time as an individual, but as a body, you guys can. Transparency in local government. So any email exchange between members and myself is considered to be public comment. So, um, and then also there's the conflict of interest law. The conflict of interest law seeks to prevent conflicts between private interests and public duties. So we wanna keep those things in mind. And again, there's the Robert Rules of Order, which um, the town clerk also spoke on. This is the summary of conflict of interest, which you will read again as you go through the um, conflict of interest online. So that we will at some point elect a chair. I guess that's part, it's on our agenda. And I guess the question is whether or not you guys want to wait until we have a seventh member, or if you guys want to um, make that decision, it's up for discussion after we finish this little presentation. But the um, chair works with staff to create the agenda and ensure document, documentation is available for the meeting. The chair opens the meeting, keeps orders, order of the meeting, announces agenda items, and closes the meeting. The vice chair acts as the chair in the absence of the chair. The minute taker records the minutes of the meeting, including start and finish times, who was in attendance, and records of votes of the board or committee. So Mr. Irv Rhodes sent this email with some meeting guidelines here, um, which was the speaking order. Meeting facilitator will establish speaking order for discussions, taking turns. Um, contradict traditional society identity based processes where men speak more than women, older people speak more than younger people and people with more degrees speak more than people with fewer degrees. So this is all up for discussion. The airtime, like any other meeting is always important to share and we will, so public comment has about a three minute time. We ask people to limit their, their comments to three minutes if possible. Um, depending on how many people we have for open comment kind of can also guide that, but we have to be mindful within our group itself with how often and how long we're speaking for. And speak for you only own your own thoughts no devil's advocates and make I statements address and respond to issues and ideas not people and personalities assume positive intent on the part of others. So public comment is a time for pu the public to bring their concerns to the group. Often there is a designated time limit per person and board and committee members do not respond to the public comment. That's very important. So there's no gathering or speaking on behalf of the group and there's no reply to all. I cannot stress that enough. I send little memes of no reply all, please do not reply all. So any anytime that that there needs to be communications. Typically it's best to send it to me and then I can send it to the group or to the individuals that it needs to go to um, just so that we can kind of, that we can avoid any, any little lapse of, or what is the word I'm looking for? I'm so sorry. Any walking on that fine line of what is a violation of the open meeting law. As an AH, AHRA member, you have no power, but as the assembly, you have all the power. The power lies within the vote. And most, if not all of our meetings start are going to be Zoom. So obviously we have Zoom etiquette. So we ask as everyone is now to keep your microphones on mute, um, designate your workspace, workspace, set up your technology ahead of time, communicate with the host and always be professional. So we have had Zoom bombings in the past. We work hard to try to avoid that. That's why we host our meetings and webinars instead of, instead of meetings. If we are to be Zoom bombed, please sign out of the meeting and then re-enter or wait for a new link from myself. And then we thank you for volunteering your time. Yes, Paul. Thank you, Jen. So I think there's one thing that we also want to emphasize, which is the public records law, which is, you know, Jen mentioned about sending an email to everyone. But if you are you are a public official now, as you're sworn into your your duty, uh, if you write an email or if you write correspondence, anything, any paper that's associated with this meeting is all subject to the public records law. So if someone may come in and say, send me all the correspondence that the 
has occurred between a AHRA members. And we will have to ask you for this from your personal account. So you will go through and tell us what it what information it is. Um, and so those are all subject to um, public disclo disclosure. So whatever you write, and you write an email regarding the work of the AHRA, my my advice to my um, staff is assume that it will be public. Assume that someone will ask it, ask for it at some point, and so measure what you're saying in words, um, and before you put it, reduce it to paper. So, but just so you're alert that there may we may get a public records request, and this comes in to pretty frequently, very frequently to the town. Um, and sometimes we'll go to committees or boards and say, please send me all your emails that you have on your personal account, or if you have a different account that might respond to this public records request. And we have 10 days to respond to that. Thank you. Okay, are there any additional questions to any of the above that was just we just spoke about? Um, yes, Michelle. Just a quick question, Jen. If we have an emergency during a meeting and we have to leave for some reason, what would be the best way to communicate without just dropping off the meeting? Um, send an email or, or is there another possibility? Yeah. So if you have my cell phone, you can give me, send a text. Um, you can email. You can raise your hand and just say, you know, I'm sorry, I have to, I have to step out quickly. So any of those will work. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we're going to go back to the agenda here. And so our next item is on the agenda is elected chair or vice chair. And so I wasn't sure how the group felt about that and what how they wanted to proceed with that because we are one member short. Okay, uh, Mr. Rhodes. You know, I don't know how other people feel about this at this point in time. I uh, myself would like to get this business item out of the way um, as soon as possible. So, I'll, uh, so I'm, what I'm recommending is that we do it today. If we don't do it today, then uh, our next meeting, we will be taking up time doing that. Uh, given the time that we have, uh, we have to do certain things, I would recommend that we do it today. Thank you. Dr. Shabazz? Yep. <laughs> I was going to offer um, deferring until the next meeting. Uh, both gives all of us a chance to uh, let this process settle in a little bit, get to know each other in the intervening time. Not so much in terms of the, um, the, the, the seventh member. I don't know if that will be in place for the next time or not, but but really just giving ourselves a little more time, we can elect someone perhaps to serve in the role at that at that meeting. But um, uh, but but in terms of um, uh, just to allow a little bit of time, I hear uh, uh, Brother Irv, Dr. Rhodes, um, you know, desire to kind of uh, take care of items as as they come up, so that we can you know move full steam ahead. But uh, it seems to me this might be one that we we could, uh, uh, or rather, let me say it this way: I'd rather we we revisit it based upon uh, figuring out our schedule and how often we think we'll be meeting. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of getting to know each other better, um, I would. I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do that given the uh, open meeting laws uh, that we have to deal with. Um, and so, I, you know, when I look at that, I said, "Well, how am I going to get to know any one of these people better without being in violation of some open meeting law?" Uh, and how do how how does one go about doing that uh, outside of open open meeting law? Um, and so. Um, you know, that's just, you know, one of those reality checks that I have in my mind in, ter in terms of Dr. Shabazz's uh, comments. And I do, I do feel a, a sense of urgency in relationship to moving this process forward uh, as soon as possible. 
Yes. Does anyone else have a comment in regards to chair or vice chair? Yes, Jamila. Yeah, um, <laughs> so I think that I'm on the side of looking at the meeting schedule perhaps and then sort of going ahead and uh, and doing that. If, if it turns out that we put a meeting schedule together today and then we're like, okay, also we feel like we're ready, I'm happy to vote today, but I would also be fine tabling that. I'm really eager to figure out how slash if we're going to deliver a report at the end of October, which is a very, very short time from now. <laughs> um, so I that almost is more urgent to me than uh, the chair. Okay, great. Thanks. So do we want to go ahead and, and try and determine um, a date and a time, the length of the meetings and the frequency of the meeting, and then we can go back to the chair piece? Okay, so what are, I mean, I guess it really has to do with schedules. So yeah. does daytime work best for folks, evening times? What are the best things? Miss Alexis, I don't want to call on people and make them feel like I'm calling them out, but like I, I haven't heard from you yet. So it would be great to hear from you. Yeah, I, yes. So I, I work 10 to six Monday through Friday. Um, you know, whatever happens, I'll make it work, but it would be great if I could not have to do this during work. Okay, that's um, understood. Yeah. That's one of the hardest things about boards and committees is finding an appropriate time for everybody that is makes it, keeps it equitable. And Heather? Um, yes. <laughs> Evenings are a little tricky between different subcommittees and advisory with school committee, but um, there's a bunch of Wednesdays and th Thursdays that could work and Mondays potentially depending. Okay. Michelle? Yeah, I can, I can definitely make evenings work if that works best. I can also make daytime work, but um, I right now Thursdays are good evening time. Um, I could also do Mondays for now. Um, if I am elected as a town counselor, that will change in January with meetings then. But um, for me, I'm, I'm fairly flexible right now. Thursdays are my best evening. Um, of all of the evenings. Okay. And uh, Jamila, your schedule? Yeah, um, I prefer evenings or early mornings. Um, I can do that. Um, but I, I am able to be flexible with afternoon times during the work day. Okay. And Irv? Um, yeah, this, this process is sort of awkward because, um, you know, there are count getting our calendars together. And I'm aware of that um, myself, Heather, and Michelle are all up for elected offices. Uh, and uh, once elected, our schedules will change drastically uh, for all of us in terms of those meeting times in the evenings, especially. Um, and also the committee work that goes along with that. So um, anything that we do is uh, today, if we can do it, I'd rather do this via doodle poll or whatever uh, to get some consistency in terms of what we're, what we're gonna decide to do. But if we do this today, it's going to have to be considered to be a temporary meeting schedule. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's, you know, Boards and committees can change when they meet as as needed to meet the needs of the members. So, you know, I was just trying to figure out, do you have an idea? Do you guys think we need to be meeting weekly, bi-weekly, monthly? I think monthly might be a little too much. Yeah, um, I, 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 for myself, I would like to meet weekly. Evening times uh, from four on are, are best for me. Um, and, and again, in terms of the days of the week at this point in time, it's all problematic. But as you said, they can be adjusted. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shabazz? 
just following the momentum <clears throat> and flow of things, um, I too can make myself available uh, evenings after six, if that's consistent with what I was hearing from Alexis. And, um, uh, you know, Thursdays is as good a, is as good a, uh, an afternoon, uh, good a, uh, an, of an evening as, uh, as any during the week. So uh, if we're all kind of zeroing in on that, I think it's fine to kind of zeroing in now because when you just tell somebody do it by doodle like you did for this there's such a wide range to, to work from but by zeroing in on that we're talking like six o'clock or 6 30 um you know and and, and uh, during a week week night um that that gives you some some parameters to start kind of zeroing in and I too think that we might want to look at weekly or every other week right now just to see where we are toward getting out this this October. If we're, we're trying to make something for this end of October or not, and um, and just to really get ourselves immersed and and get our feet wet with this process, we might need to be looking a little bit a little bit frequently. All of that can change up after November second or after dates that people are sworn in for their for their their duties on uh, on elected offices but at least through the rest of uh september through through october sounds like we we might do well to try and get together uh weekly um perhaps a thursday evening so um i'm actually hoping that we can start with mondays and then switch to thursdays as we go on if needed i'm already with the CSWG on Thursday evenings. I see that. There you go. Um, I can't meet on October 4th, that Monday. Um, uh, what about, um, you know, um, well, again, I'm thinking, well, you know, th again, those things are going to change um, when um, January comes and people are sworn in because I don't know when town council meets, but I believe it's Mondays. Uh, but anyway, um, if if we're going to do it and we want to we want to do it today, then Monday in the evening, uh, starting any time after five. I think after six is the latest earliest we can start because Alexis is at work until six. So six, all right. Yeah. I mean, I can I can go along with six. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like Mondays could be a. a you know, hectic over the next six weeks with the council meetings on Mondays. So um, what about Wednesdays or Tuesday or Wednesdays? Tuesday is preferable for me. Oh, Heather, do you have a conflict? You have that I have a conflict look going on? You know, I was gonna say uh, Wednesdays are preferable. Every other week for Tuesday nights will be a, either regional school committee or school committee meeting. So depending on what time. Okay, and what time are those at? I don't want to double. Yeah, I don't want to. I'm good for double dipping, just um, not overlapping too much. And they're okay. at 6.30, but I'm, I'm good to go. I'm and Jamila, good. how do Wednesdays work for you? I also have in like every sort of second and third Wednesday of the month <laughs> engagement. So it's it just awkward. That's usually from seven to eight or eight or nine, depending. And I know, I, I mean, I hate to offer Friday as a meeting day because it's Friday, but work must get done. So how do people feel about Fridays? My dog likes it. I can do Fridays. Uh, Michelle and Irv. That's what I call making a giant sacrifice <laughs> right there. Uh, doing a meeting on Friday evening. Uh, that is... Uh, um, you know, I don't want to get divorced, but um, <laughs> I, I think that that would be really tough uh, in, in a number a number of ways. I mean, I would I would try I will try to make it work. If everyone else can make it on Friday and no other day, I'm to talk like uh, then I I'm willing know. to um, do it. Oh, wasn't cheating on these other ones? What was it the just, consensus mm -hmm. on? Oh, sorry, John. What was the consensus on Tuesday night? Tuesday night was not. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Heather has every other Tuesday has it 
a meeting. So, I mean, that would be kind of hard until we could get a, a, a particular day down. Because again, once we hit November 1st, I can meet like the November 4th, Thursday, and we can change till Thursday. We just have to get through the next six weeks. So maybe we can do Fridays and then reevaluate when that time comes. Or we could, or if we're going to do every other week, so maybe we could be the opposing week of the council meeting. I mean, of the school committee meeting. So did the school committee meet this Tuesday? So that would be open for next Tuesday? Yes. And then we could determine next Tuesday. I mean, we're going to have to take it a little bit by a little bit, right? then the alternative day could be the Friday if we feel like we need to meet at least once a week. Yeah. Let me see if I understand this. If we meet, we choose Tuesday, we would meet next Tuesday. Yes. Our first meeting would be next Tuesday. Yes. And then after next Tuesday, we would be meeting every other Tuesday. Is that correct? Yes. And if needed, we could throw a Friday meeting in there if we felt it was needed. I'm just also aware of public participation and Friday evenings could be a little bit more challenging to get community engagement and public participation. But I think that sounds like a really good plan to do the every other Tuesday and then meet on Fridays if needed. Mm -hmm. And again, this is only for over the next six weeks. Sorry, was this starting at six or was this after six? Do you need 6.30, Alexis? I mean, that would that would be great, but I, I want to default to the majority. 6.30 um, work for everyone. And so the question is, do we think we need an hour and a half, two hours? We can always determine that per meeting, but Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm always one for um, when we're doing meetings to have some time limit uh, so that we can, um, you know, discipline ourselves to being efficient in our meetings. Uh, you know, because you, sometimes you have meetings that go on all evening. Uh, and I think that that is something that we don't want to get caught up in. So um, I, I think that uh, as for now, um, trying to determine the time uh, time limit is, is problematic. However, if I would like to suggest that it no, be no longer than a two hour meeting. Oh, right. Um, so Tuesday, an hour and a half or two hours, starting at 6.30. Yeah, why don't we say 6.30 to eight, if you can, be available to kind of open the Zoom at maybe uh, 6.15. We won't formally start until 6.30, but give us a little time for some uh, for those that might arrive at 6.15 to, to uh, uh, get situated, and uh, uh, but then formally start at 6.30, projecting uh, eight, an 8 p.m. finish. If need be, we can ask ourselves, you know, at that time, if we need an extension of 15 minutes, an extension of 30 minutes, and just kind of proceed from there as, as our uh, completing our agenda uh, dictates. Okay. All right, so I've got Tuesday, the 28th from 6.30 to 8 p.m starting opening up the meeting at 6 15 and so i just realized this upcoming tuesday this isn't an ongoing thing but i'm teaching a class um so at 5 30 so i think um you guys should still have your meeting and perhaps we can get your meeting open and started and then um have your discussion and then i can go back and take minutes if needed afterwards let me ask the question if it if we're going to do a 6.30 meeting, it will be posted uh, to the public as a 6.30 meeting, uh, beginning of a 6.30 meeting. Yes. Isn't that correct? All right, yep. 
maybe for our purposes, but we can't transact any business. No, you can't. It's kind of get to know get to know each other. Um, okay, so Tuesday, 6 30, 8 o'clock p.m. And what are the items that you would like on the agenda? Because this agenda needs to be posted by tomorrow to meet meet the 48 hour um, meeting law. Anybody have any topics on, on deck on deck? Well, I, well, for me, the first one would be um, election of officers. If we're not doing it tonight, then we're going to do it next Tuesday. That's the first item. Uh, of course, all the uh, uh, other regular items that uh, come on the agenda will be present there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any? Um, yeah. Yes, Michelle. Um, just two items that I, I don't know if it's for today or next time, but I would like to talk about the possibility of offering a public comment both before the meeting and at the end of the meeting, maybe splitting the public comment period. Um, and then the other, um, the other piece is talking about whether we would like to um, bring Evanston, the Evanston folks that we've been working with up into this point into the conversation sooner than later. So maybe inviting somebody sooner than later, like Alderman Robin Rue Simmons and or any of the other folks we've been working with, um, just to sort of help us set a foundation based on the work that they've already done there in Evanston. This. And, oh, okay. So I have Heather first. Um, I don't know, I, I don't know if this is an agenda item, but um, prioritizing looking at the end of October date when we're supposed to be presenting, whether we wanna keep that and hit the ground running or if there's flexibility. Thank you. And um, Mr. Rhodes. I just I just want to be clear that because uh, I'm not <laughs> that all of these items that we're mentioning are items for uh, the upcoming agenda on the uh, 28th. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. So um, thank you. The it seems to me um, that a useful kind of uh, visioning. Uh, exercise would be really important. Secondly, there is a um, community-based uh, group that um, has been meeting over several months to try and create a process of engaging the uh, African heritage community, the Black African American community, um, and they would certainly be interested, I think, in trying to um, uh, offer to talk with us and offer what uh, what uh, what they may what they hope they can present in terms of ways to get feedback uh, from the uh, uh, the African heritage community of Amherst about uh, items of concern, items of uh, of interest, of priorities, and so that's. Uh, uh, if that could be an agenda item to discuss and to hear from uh, folks from the Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts. And Jamila? Um, possibly I'm being too literal. Um, and hopefully this is the unification of Heather's priority on time and uh, Dr. Shabazz's visioning. But I'd like to be clear about what a report is and what's supposed to be in it and that kind of thing, what we're supposed to produce. <laughs> I was just gonna just gonna go back to that because I was like, yeah, I don't exactly know what's going, what is supposed to be in there to see if we need to extend the time out or not. So, Paul, do you have any insight on that? I don't, but I think it's a perfect item to talk about at your next meeting to get clarification on what is what does that look like? Is it a PowerPoint? Is it a written report? Is it, you know that kind of thing. Yes, perfect I, item. But, and we can mm -hmm. ask the council what their intention is, what their request is. Okay. Is there a member of the group that wants to reach out to the council and ask that question? Um, if not, then I can. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I have uh, no problems to, to sort of uh, um, reach out through you on that. I do note we have a counselor uh, in, as an attendee and uh, based upon that interest, uh, you know, we don't have a specific council liaison assigned to this. And I think I've heard that the council isn't even doing that anymore, but um, I think it is important to sort of uh, tap in with any interested counselors about what kinds of things they are interested in seeing from this committee in, in, in relation to a report or recommendation. Um, the kind of buildup to, to now that we've uh, talked about in the past is the ability for this group to kind of, uh, as part of planning, as part of producing a municipal plan, to, um, to make a recommendation, uh, working with the count, uh, town manager, working with staff to, to understand the intricacies legally and financially, uh, but then to uh, upon vetting the, uh, these ideas to then proceed to make a recommendation to the council for their, for their deliberation and, and possible motion and, and, and voting. So for example, um, relative to the question of um, tax revenues from cannabis sales, uh, potentially being a, a revenue stream that a reparative justice plan, a reparation, municipal reparations plan would draw from, um, the question becomes the way in which to initiate that, that, that conversation amongst ourselves to make sure that there is sufficient um, information amongst ourselves that is certain, it's cert this, that particular question certainly dovetails with our meeting with First Repair in that uh, first repair uh, coming out of the Evanston, Illinois experience that is exactly the revenue source that funded their municipal uh, reparations plan or part, uh, a considerable part of the, uh, uh, the source that is funding their municipal uh, reparative justice plan. So I, uh, I would certainly say that um, the, we have, I think there is something of a sense of what we may mean by a report that it has to do with uh, uh, recommendations uh, relative to the creation of a municipal reparation, uh, reparative justice plan that we could begin to stimulate the necessary action, action steps that the council itself will ultimately have to, have to be part of, um, of discussing, uh, vetting, and, uh, and and voting. Okay, hey, Mr. Rhodes. Uh, yes, um, I am. I am really concerned uh, about uh, the way we're going to be using our time here, in terms of what we have to accomplish. Uh, you know, we 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 seem like we're going to be meeting every other Tuesday, uh, every other Tuesday. If you go back to the budget timelines, that uh, is going to put an incredible crunch on us in terms of dealing with some of those timelines. And um, so I, I do have a sense of anxiety about that uh, uh, because um, there are things that we are going to, or at least I believe we are going to want to be putting forward to have an impact upon that budget process. And that's going to take some time for us to discuss within it. What I would like to suggest is that uh, for, our, for our next meeting is that if we can prioritize those things that we need to deal with and talk about and discuss and come to agreement with, uh, on for our next meeting. Uh, because now I'm listening to a whole group, a lot of topics, and I'm saying, well, how are we going to practically deal with them? So I, I guess I would like to break those topics down in terms of what are those topics that we're going to want to take actions on, i.e. vote on, versus I, uh, topics that we just want to have additional information on and have other people present to, present to us. Okay. And Ms. I'm, I'm going to go back to everything. I'm just trying to follow the, the, the hand raise. So we're going to go back to the meeting date, right? Because that's 
of concern, right? Meeting once a week, once meeting biweekly. So, and I can't quite remember, Monday was an issue because it falls on the same day as the council meetings. Monday does fall on the date of council meeting. And Mr. Balkman? Well, I don't, does it matter if it falls on the same day as the council meetings? It does. I want to clarify one thing. There will be a liaison from the council. The president has requested a liaison. There's a lot of interest in it. The council will choose its liaison on Monday. So you're aware of that. And Michelle? I'm wondering if it's possible on the off week, um, if we feel like there is this crunch between now and November to meet at during the day, um, to, to slip in a daytime meeting so that it would only be every other week that we would do that. Um, I know it's not ideal, but I wonder if it's um, a possibility for, for the group to consider that. Yeah, and I'm actually looking at the council calendar right now. So they meet every other week. So they meet on Monday, the 27th. Oh, and then they meet on the 4th, but then they don't meet until the 18th. Because the 11th is a holiday. So I don't know if we could do the I mean, having the two days, like a Monday, Tuesday, one week, Monday, one week, Tuesday, does that seem feasible for folks? Uh, that's feasible, you know, I, I, uh, uh, Jennifer, um, the, 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 the issue that comes up my mind is this 48 hour um, issue relationship to posting uh, the agendas. Will we uh, have enough time to do that? So we would be meeting Tuesday, which is why I'm trying to find out what the agenda items are now for Tuesday's meeting. But, and then, so I post the meetings and I think that we should have, to, I, it's, what I'm trying to say is it no different time consuming for any other group that I meet with, I don't think. Uh, what I'm referring to is if we do these alternate days that are being discussed, whether... Yeah we would have enough time. I, I'm, not, yep. I'm not doing the calculations in my mind. Yep, so if we meet on a Tuesday and then the next meet week we're gonna meet on Monday, then I would post the meeting probably Wednesday. All right. Dr. Shabazz? Yeah, so I, I think this uh, is important. I like the way we're, we're kind of fleshing out what is uh, maybe a, a, the, a set of dates over the next six weeks. Um, therefore, we can begin to, um, you know, what we don't accomplish in, uh, in the agenda we're talking about right now on next Tuesday, we know we've got a next date to, to kind of, you know, uh, park it at. Um, I think, for example, in trying to schedule um, a representative from First Repair, uh, we're going to need a little time for that, you know, to, to, and to see what's consistent with their schedule. So now that we know that we're looking at uh, next Tuesday and then the Monday after that, we've got a couple of dates to, to present to them uh, to see if they can uh, begin to make, make either of those days. In my mind, that's maybe about a 30 minute um, uh, piece for them to kind of present uh, some of the background of, of the work in Evanston as, as could be relevant to us here. Um, and, um, and so if you're also trying to kind of put times on, on some of these agenda items uh, for whenever that would be, um, I would say at least try to budget 30 minutes for, for the representative from first repair. Um, the discussion with respect to the Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts, I think could be a could be a 15 minutes. And let me say as well, if we do go with this idea of starting at 6:30 with say a 15 minute public comment period, um, the Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts could, put, if we know ahead of time, could potentially have three minutes, five minutes within that within that opening 15 minutes. Uh, for someone from there to to sort of 
you know, dialogue about what their hopes are for the um, African Heritage Reparations Assembly, uh, what they're hoping to do uh, that, that can complement our work, that can help inform our work. Um, I think that could even possibly be three to five minutes um, within public comment. But if we wanted to dialogue back with them, maybe it shouldn't be public comment. We should just make it a regular item in, yeah. the, in the regular meeting. So we could have a, a little bit of back and forth with whomever comes from BAM. Um, and finally, I don't have a problem as well with thinking about 15 minutes at the back end, be it be it 8.15 or what have you, if we see that there might be might be interest. Because part of a big part of our work in this early period um, is very um, is a kind of a, a strategic planning kind of thing, thinking about the town calendar, thinking about recommendations we need to make that's that's going to be timely and consistent with what the town, um, how the town's calendar is structured. But then it's also an educational uh, uh, function in this early period. It's educating about what reparative justice is, what it what it looks like, what it can be for us here in Amherst. Uh, and so the the idea of robust uh, participation opportunities for the public to to come forward and to and to you know speak to these issues is is I think valuable uh, a valuable way to start out um, uh, depending on if if that interest is there. Okay, Mr. Rhodes. Yeah, uh, all of those things that uh, Dr. Shabazz talked about are really important things, and you know I. Well, you know, I, I think that in my mind, when I look at, look at everything that we're discussing, I, again, I, I want to try to break our first agenda down in terms of a those things and items that we're going to uh, that we might think need to have, have take action on or vote on, and b those things in which will be information section uh, session for us, uh, which uh, might include. Uh, everything that uh, Dr. Shabazz is talking about and other things other people might want to hear about. But we, we, I would like for us to keep in mind this would be our first meeting and, um, and that that meeting will have uh, some things that we really must de deal with. And I wanna make sure we leave enough time for that and then come back to those items that need to be action, take action on and then hear the other kinds of uh, items in which would uh, contribute to our education. So um, Dr. Shabazz, I think that I heard you say that you would be okay with, well, so Paul, if, if the council appoints someone to, to be the liaison for this group, will they be at the first two, at our Tuesday meeting? I, I don't know. So it doesn't require the counselor to be at the meetings. They're there to observe. They can watch it on, you know, tape mm -hmm. re replay. They're not a participant. They're there to um, report back to the council more so than being. Okay. But, it, but it's, it's someone you can go to if you need to. Yep. So I was just thinking, Dr. Shabazz, if you wanted, to, you had offered to reach out to the counselors to ask what um, their kind of vision for the they see for the report what they want to see for the report would be um and so if that's i think that's one of the first things that we got to bring it back so once we have the dates we got to bring it back to that report because that deadline is so quick um and everything will determine whether i don't think there's an issue if we ask for more time but i just think we need to know whether or not and we won't know that until we know what we're putting in the report or what you guys are putting in the report so um, if you can go ahead and ask the council and then report that back on Tuesday, which will kind of get everybody's wheels moving. Um, I think we also need to talk about outreach a little bit. Jennifer, just yep. uh, one, one thing. I think right off the bat, I, I think that we need to ask for an extension of time rather than uh, in terms of this report um, uh, because of, of, the, of, of our meeting every other week. Um, and I, I, I think trying to um, work under that kind of time pressure is not something that we need to do. Now, I think that um, you know, we should have that as an item on our agenda, 
to ask uh, for an extension of time. Uh, in other words, at our first meeting, that we have that as an agenda item. Mm -hmm. And I just want to clarify, I believe that we're going to be meeting every every other Tuesday and then every other Monday. Correct. Okay. It's so that, again, I, I understand. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm just saying, suggesting yep. that we have that on our on that our agenda for our first meeting. And so we can vote on that. Yep. Absolutely. And Michelle? I, I'm not sure that we necessarily need to ask the council at this moment to make an extension on that. Um, that's that's um, my you know perspective is that we want to find out what the council expectations are, and instead of sort of adding another agenda item for the council to have to you know decide on one way or another right now, I think we have probably a little bit of time before we have to do that. But if you know if the group feels like that's something that we should definitely move forward with right away. Um, you know, that's okay too. I just, I don't think that piece is as urgent right now based on my observations of watching other, you know, um, committee work uh, unfold. Yep. And I think that we'll, we can just put it on the agenda, right? Um, and then we can hear what Dr. Shabazz has, has learned from the counselors um, and what you guys have about a week to think about what you might want to see in a report. And then we still have to tackle the visioning process exercise. So it won't be at that Tuesday meeting. So we would need someone to lead the visioning process exercise, or we need to brainstorm on what it is that we're envisioning to happen for reparations to some right. degree. Yeah. Mr. Rhodes? Yeah, I, I guess when I talk, when you talk about the visioning process, that we really should have some idea what we're talking about and how much time is that going to take in relationship to our first meeting? If, if I have I, a number of things in mind in terms of the visioning process, uh, certainly and, and there are different models of, of the visioning process that we could use. So it's, it, you know, it, it's something that I, in my mind, I'm trying to get my head around I'm saying, all right, yeah, we'll have a visioning process, but we haven't even decided what that process is going to look like. Right, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to, check with one of them with all of you and see if one of you guys can take that piece on i don't know if you can or can't or if that's too big but it, it seems like it's really a very at this point very broad because everybody's going to have different ideas and they have to get narrowed down somehow jamila yeah i was just going to uh call out the time to folks <laughs> um yeah just to be conscious of that and also i can say on my behalf i'm very happy to do homework so if there are pre-reads, if we want to do a visioning process and somebody says, here's a process, please read it and we'll come and execute it next Tuesday, I'm ready to do that uh, just to keep meetings tight. So I'll throw that out there as a suggestion. Yes. All right. So Jamila is going <laughs> to work on a visioning process. Is that what I just heard? I think I just got voluntold. I'm sure I can find them. Yes. <laughs> but I, I like send that it to you to send it. I send it to you to send out, Jennifer. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. That sounds great. Okay, so um, so so far I have the on the agenda the election of officers. We'll do public comment before and after visioning process exercise. Um, a follow up with Dr. Shabazz on what the expectation is for the report, and whether or not we're going to request time for additional time for the report. So the only thing else that I ask is I'm I'm struggling with what to, so some of you guys I know and some of you I don't. And so some of you I always refer to as Dr. Shabazz and some of you as Mr. Irv Rhodes. And so it would be helpful if you guys could send me an email with how you would like to be addressed in the meetings and whether or not you want your pronouns used or what your proper pronouns are. Um, Paul? Yeah, I had in my notes also about Evanston or some, a representative from Evanston coming in. I didn't know if the idea was to talk about inviting them for your next meeting or to invite them to your next meeting. Yeah, so, because we also have the um, first repair and then we have BAM, so. Let, let me say, I. Um, 
we can certainly send information, uh, a link or whatever about first repair. Some of us have met with um, Robin uh, Ruth Simmons, who was the counselor, uh, former city counselor in Evanston that uh, worked and, and, and got their municipal reparations plan uh, approved. Um, and so, you know, we're some, some are familiar, some are not, so we can certainly get, get the links out. And um, if it's, I'd like to at least begin to feel out with them uh, their potential availability for one of our dates on our calendar. And then yes, we can then take that up Tuesday um, after people have had a chance to, to maybe look at the links, look at the information, we can take up the, the final kind of scheduling if that's, if that's agreeable. Okay, and Michelle? Yeah, that's what I was gonna suggest as well. And I'm happy to make that connection to see what availability First Repair has. Um, I'm also happy to send any information that we've compiled from First Repair to the to Jennifer, I think, right? And then she'll disseminate it to the group. So I, I will I will I will do that. Yep. And um Irv. Yeah, and, and, and the, my preferred name is Irv. Uh, the other things, um, as my daughter says, everyone has one. So um, I'm just Irv. And the, uh, what I would like for you to do, Jennifer, at this moment in time, please list all the things that uh, we have discussed as possible agenda items so we can know where we are. List them now? Yes. OK. So. What I have um, are election of officers, the public comment before and after, prioritizing the report due date, visioning process exercise, outreach, um, an invitation to BAM, an invitation to um, first repair, and the asking the councils what they want from out of the report, and um, requesting additional time for report, and then I have prioritizing. So the, the, the two invitations are, are, are we, or is, is that, does that mean we're going to be voting on asking for people, uh, those two people, those two groups to appear before us, or are they going to be there? I don't know that either one of those are happening right now. I think that Dr. Shabazz said now that we have an idea of a schedule that he can reach out, but these were all the things that were just talked about for potential agenda items. And so I've read them all. And so what I have to actually put on the agenda is everything basically except for the invitations. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, that was probably confusing. No, that was clear. I think that's just the last two items. Then it's just a matter of if folks want to think out loud now about process wise, do you wish for us at the Tuesday meeting to to discuss um, those 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 uh, representatives coming um, and, uh, um, and 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 proceeding to then, you know, see where we are with respect to that coming on our calendar. Um, Michelle is saying she can check with First Repair on their availability for an upcoming uh, 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 Monday or uh, you know two Tuesdays from now um, possibility, and so she would know something of that at the time. But yes, it would be to to try to um, uh, give folks right now the chance to think about this and then to make a decision about uh, that being a part of a subsequent. Um, uh, uh, date on our calendar, and likewise with someone from the uh, uh, Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts. Um, some of us are part of that assembly, some of us are not, but it's an opportunity. We'll, we'll get you information, I, I, I guess, through, through Jennifer about it, and we can then have, uh, have the discussion at the, at the Tuesday meeting. So those, act those are action items in terms of the, all right. Uh, the other thing is, uh, because I'm looking at my uh, watch and thinking about time, is to make sure that the next meeting, the Monday, me the Monday meeting that we're going to have, uh, what date is exactly is that? October 4th. I 
I'm not available on October 4th. It's not, it's not a constant thing. It's just that one Monday, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're muted, Jen. Once a Zoom meeting, right? Once a Zoom meeting. Um, it would be great if all of the members were together for at least the first three meetings, right? And then move forward from there. So that is, it's, it is tough. But I think that this is probably an easier way than trying to send out a doodle poll. Um, because the last doodle poll, this was the only time out of 20 dates that everybody had yeah. agreed on. So, um, Alexis? Yeah, just a quick question. And maybe I'm just not understanding. So for our next meeting, we're discussing whether or not these groups will join or they're going to join and make public comment before we talk about visioning. Okay. And then is visioning, like visioning is, is going to be a longer thing be, or, or is it Okay, because I just, I feel like it's just like a little bit inappropriate to like not include people and do visioning first without consulting like, you know, BAM and the other groups. So yeah, I don't know. I was just a little bit confused about like when, what was good happening point. exactly. Good point, good point. Mm -hmm. Well, and so I think part of the visioning process exercise is just so this group has an idea. But as I said before, there's a amount of outreach that has to occur before anything else can really happen. And so, you know, basically we have to report and I don't know that anybody really has an idea of what that looks like right now. So I think the envisioning process just kind of helps tie that together a little bit. This is kind of off the calendar building uh, aspect of this, but let me just share honestly what I think is kind of, of, of in my sense of priority. And I wanna take a deep breath and invite others to take a deep breath as well. You know, Herb talked about an anxiety with, with this process, with time frames and all of that. So I, I definitely will speak to the, to the uh, council, counselors um, I'll start with the one that's here as an attendee. I'll, I'll you know, perhaps see if any others uh, want to talk about that or, or see if, if, if she recommends any others I should talk to, but, uh, or if any of you want to make a recommendation of, of any that I should talk to, uh, Town Manager Bokelman, uh, Jennifer, um, I'm, I welcome that. But let me say this. To me, I think our most critical priority is to build the financial instrument that would support whatever reparative justice plan we might come up with. Because anything we come up with, I think will entail some costs, will entail, entail some budget, which is why we had the budget, the chief financial officer here to talk to us about budget. It, it's likely to involve some budget. And so I think one of our highest priorities is to, as part of this planning process, is to think about the appropriate ways to develop a fund because the, the free cash amount, that's, that is a very good start, but that's not um, a sufficient amount to do much with when you think about 200,000 generating 4.5 annually in interest, that's not a very substantial amount to do much with. So we've got to think about how does the town, as part of constructing a plan, develop a funding mechanism that can um, support the work to repair harms. Um, so for me, that is one of the utmost priorities I raised the question of tax revenues on cannabis as a possibility because it came up previously as a discussion amongst our counselors as a possibility. I, I distinctly recall it being mentioned that presently those revenues are not specifically earmarked to anything. So if, if that has not changed, we've got an important window to begin to construct 
the planning process and the and the argument, the rationale for why this would be would make an appropriate place to earmark those those funds. So you know, ultimately in this process, we want to talk about what is the harm. Uh, some of the research that was done by Reparations for Amherst is a good starting place. The website of the National uh, Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America in COBRA, if you ever if you go to that website, uh, has good discussion about the harm nationally, broadly. Um, NARC, the National African American Reparations Commission, has good information and analyses people have constructed. Our own son of, of Amherst, William Darity Jr. and uh, Kirsten Mullen, his partner, their book From Here to Equality at the broad federal level outlines a sense of the harm uh, that has been done in producing the, uh, uh, the wealth gap. Although be clear, that project is about, is an argument about a federal reparations plan, not a municipal plan. So, but these are resources in the way of homework in the spirit of Dr. Jemison that we could begin to look at collectively to have a common vocabulary, to have a, a common idea about what we're talking about here. But ultimately, uh, before the harm analysis, I think the, the, the critical priority right now is to help the town think about uh, and, and make commitments about constructing the funding mechanism that would go toward dealing with uh, addressing, repairing the harms that we, we, help to, we help to identify and we help to plan about. But I think our priority right now ought to be thinking about the financial instrument. Thank you. Okay, right. and I'm just gonna skip to Jamila quickly, Irv, Jamila. Um, thank you, Dr. Shabazz. I am in agreement that the priority is the financial instrument. I am, for my own sake, going to call out time again. Um, we're almost 30 minutes over on a 90 minute meeting. Uh, I, like Alexis, am also during my normal work day here. So um, I'd, I'd love to understand what are the final things we need to resolve at this meeting so that we can all comfortably move forward to the next meeting. Thank you. Irv? So I just took a deep breath. The, there are two major issues uh, that this committee is going to have to grapple with. Uh, Dr. Shabazz mentioned one. And therefore, we, when he talked about my anxiety, uh, is how we move towards that goal of defining a funding source a continuing sustainable funding source. That's one of the major areas of our charge is to do that. The second major thing that we, we're gonna to have to grapple with uh, is who is gonna be eligible for this. And that particular item is surrounded by legal kinds of concerns. And we need to know what those legal concerns are and legal parameters are. So, yeah, I mean, there there are things I get uh, when I I'm, I guess I'm a I'm not only a process person, I'm also a person who looks at how do we get to from A to B uh, in a particular period of time. And when I look at getting from A to B in the time frame that we have available to us. And giving, given that there are certain members won't be available on certain times and dates, uh, and knowing that certain things can be delayed because of, of uh, not having a quorum or something, yes, I, I do feel that. And so I do feel this a sense of urgency in terms of, of us moving forward uh, with it. And, and, and unfortunately, I, I didn't even mention that for an agenda item uh, in relationship to deciding uh, uh, the process for deciding who is going to be eligible. Okay, and I just, so I just wonder too, keeping in mind what Jamila said in, in regards to time, because we are over. So I think the best thing that we can do right now is to 
to just only do our one meeting for Tuesday and then we just have to, I don't want to spend too much time on it, figure out the next meeting if it's not going to be that Monday because everybody needs to be there. So if people can take a look at their um, calendars again and see if there's things that can be moved or not moved or different time of the day, that would be great. But for now, we're going to go with Tuesday. Um, and before we get to who qualifies for what, I'm, I'm so my only concern with that is we still haven't or you guys haven't really figured out what reparations mean in Amherst, right? Like, I don't, so I think we need to kind of grab there because it could be that we're providing different types of services or, or it could be a combination of everything. So, I mean, I just thought <clears throat> that would be helpful, but in, in the sake of yeah. time, which all of my meetings run over, you know, it's just one of those things. And so I, Anybody who needs to leave, I, you know, if you need to leave, please feel free to. I don't want to keep um, you here. And then I've got Mr. Rhodes. Yeah, just remember that every whether every decision we make in relationship to how uh, and what and where and whom uh, a reparation is going uh, going to happen, all of that is going to be wrapped around with legal parameters. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Shabazz? Yes, so thank you, uh, Irv. I, I think it's good to get some of these things on the table. Thank everyone for uh, the time today and the extra time. Um, if there's no objection, I move that we adjourn this meeting. Sounds good. It's 4.03 p.m. <laughs> it's been moved and do we have a second? Second. <laughs> Second from uh, Dr. Jemison. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Or aye. indicate with your hand. I don't think we need to do a roll call. Sound like we're all ready to go. <laughs> See you. Uh, Irv, did you have something else? I don't know. No, my hand no, just no. left. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I've already left. All right. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Nice to meet you. Bye. See you guys thank on you. Tuesday. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.